Hey, good morning and welcome, Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and welcome to Friday. Yes, the first day of October, the start of Q4, the start of fiscal year 2022 for the federal government. And most importantly, it is Friday, which means it's going to be the start of the weekend. Our toll-free number, 800-951-0592. The website at allamericangold.com. And uh, joined, as I always am, my partner in crime, the main man up there at the mothership in Colorado. I know he's looking forward to Friday. Uh, Jason Walker. Jason, how you doing? Doing good, doing good, Joe. Just uh, keep on, keep on. Lies! You're telling lies! <laughs> I'm powering through, Joe. I'm powering through. <laughs> there's always there's always so much more to do. I mean, uh, uh, tomorrow, for example, I'm going to go meet with some gold and silver customers, some radio listeners, and uh, continue on. So even on Saturdays. Yeah, but it's a good thing. They're, they're inviting me to dinner, so I'll, uh, I'll get some free food there's out of the show. There's a trade involved. Yeah. yeah. Right? We, we got we to... Got trivia night tonight at the radio station did i hear that right Con yeah constitutional trivia I, I know that some people are so serious about their constitution that you're not supposed to have fun with it but i think the first amendment protects uh <laughs> enjoyment humorously of the constitution but so i think it'll be fun uh, and, and not just a serious uh pound the first amendment second amendment and, you know I, I think it's gonna the kovika and the guys from the red rift are gonna they're gonna have some fun with uh, the, the event tonight uh, the good news is it's friday uh, yesterday we had uh, big moves in in the gold and silver markets. Today, uh, gold's a little flat. Uh, it's actually up a little bit, uh, 1760, but but uh, it's been about 1765, or uh, yeah, 1765 to 1760 or in that range. Silver, another strong day. Uh, silver is essentially. Uh, what was it? I think it was Wednesday when they clobbered it, and, and we were kind of yep. laughing on air because because there was no product and and there was really no reason for it. Uh, it it's it's taking it all back now. So silver was up about sixty cents yesterday, up another forty cents today, uh, around twenty two and a half dollars. Uh, Wall Street try well. The Dow is trying to stay positive. Uh, the Nasdaq and the S and P are down. It was another. Uh, Big loss day on Wall Street yesterday. Uh, we got data points out. We, we've got inflation data. This is August data uh, for the Fed. This is what I'd like to call the most manipulated inflation data that they could possibly come up with. Uh, it didn't get any cooler. Let's just put it that way. So uh, the Fed not real happy with their, their price price. The PCE, uh, this is where all, all the little tricks that they like to pull uh, stayed at the exact same level. So we're at the highest levels since 1991 on all of the, what I'll call the manipulated central bank inflation data. And the reason why it's 1991 is because that's when they changed all, all how they calculated all the data, Jason. That's when they they uh, said we're no longer going to track actual inflation. Yeah, we're they gonna, we're going to go we're going to go with this new way, which of course allows yes. them to understate. Yeah, they changed the parameters when it uh, seems to <laughs> help their story, right? <laughs> right. Well, it, it almost looks like uh, we're going to need another parameter change. Yeah, it's, it's running oh, yeah. too hot. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, 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 it's running too hot. We had some ISM survey data out, uh, and, and it, just reiterating all of the same things, which is orders are slowing, hard to get product. The prices we're paying for product continue to be at record highs. Uh, they did set a new record, uh, Jason, which was prices that you have to pay for products from manufacturers rose at the fastest pace since they've been collecting the data. Oh, well, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that's not a great thing. <laughs> not, not a great thing out there when, when we're looking at uh, what, what's going to happen out there. And then uh, 
Uh, we had auto sale information, and this, a really weak number. Uh, and we know all about the autos. There's no chips. Uh, they can't sell enough cars. Uh, that's going to have a negative effect. And then today, i got to highlight this one. We talked about it briefly yesterday. The post office today. It starts its new plan. And, it's, and, and like any good government agency, its new plan charge you more and give you even worse service. We'll tell you all about that when we get back. Patriot Radio News Hour, welcome to Friday. 800-951-0592, Patriot Radio News Hour. Yeah, the... I don't know how this even is a business model. This is like a Sears and Kmart business model from the post office. Hey, we're already doing a crappy job. I've got a great idea. Right, especially... With the Amazon, I mean, even us, like, listen, we stopped using them. Not all together, but we deliver most of our gold shipments now FedEx. We deliver them all FedEx, but there are some customers that actually want us to deliver it through the post office. But the reason was they were too expensive. It cost too much. They'd get mad at us. Right, like we're doing our metals plans right now, and 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 in a day, we can process thirty to fifty orders a day. That, that as far as shipping, right? Because it just takes time to, to to box it, invoice it. You know, make you know, got to double check it. All those things. It it takes time. The post office, like when we would do our medals plan, they would give the girls a hard time. How many boxes? They'd start questioning them, telling them uh, they, they would put us on restrictions, saying, hey, you can only bring, I think at the end, I think they were down to like 12 boxes a day. Uh, yet we had to show up uh, earlier in the day and things like that. And, and it just got to be such an asshole. We said, all right, well, well, we'll figure out another way to do it. And we've done it. And now, now of course, they're like, well, we're, we're losing so much money. We're going to make the mail service even slower. And by the way, uh, Arizona, Nevada, California, Texas, Florida are the states that are going to be impacted the most by this. Uh, but, I, but providing worse service is not a way to grow your business, Jason. Well, maybe uh, all that ammunition they bought is to protect themselves from angry customers coming. <laughs> Boy, I would have well, we we there's only one bill really for us that matters, and I they all matter, but we have uh, I'll, I'll just say our our American Express card for 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 both Patriot and the radio station. If you pay early, they give you a discount. And it's not much. I don't want to exaggerate it, but usually we'll save two, three thousand dollars a year. Already once this year, by the time the bill got to us, the paid to early date had already passed. You know, we, so we couldn't even get the discount because they couldn't. Get, normally, when it shows, we've got like one day to get the check back in the mail to get the discount. You know, the girls are, they look for that bill because I get mad. I want my discount. Now, uh, I got a funny feeling I probably won't be getting an American Express discount anymore because the mail won't be able to deliver it fast enough. You know, your analogy is pretty good, Joe, of, of Target and Kmart. Um <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, Target and Kmart, uh, when business models aren't working and Walmart and Amazon are smashing them, they have to just close up stores and go away. But the post office, the one thing that doesn't fit is, uh, well, the government will just limp that thing along as long as they can, Joe. I got to imagine we could privatize the post office and make a ton of money. You could privatize it by getting rid of it. <laughs> right? Make a ton of money. Yeah. Just... Right, just let UPS and FedEx and everything right. them handle it. Yep. We make a ton of money. 
But now nah, we're not going to do that. Speaking of debt, we've got the debt ceiling coming up. So, uh, yes, late yesterday, uh, we had a funding bill for the government passed because the government, you know, the fiscal year starts today. 2022 starts today. We don't have a budget. Shocking, right? Great, another great way to run your business. We don't have a budget. So they passed an emergency spending bill that allows the government to, to keep operating. On October 18th, so when you throw out the week, about two weeks from now, a little over two weeks from now, the Treasury will be out of money. So right now the Treasury has a little over $150 billion left in their checking account. And that's going to be gone by the 18th. Uh, and that's called the debt limit or the debt ceiling. Uh, they created this back in the 80s because they were worried about, hey, how, the, how fast the debt is growing. And they wanted to give Congress the opportunity, Jason, to be like, hey, maybe we're getting a little carried away here. I'd like to call it like, hey, maybe government's gotten too big. But, well, in the last, what, what would you say, probably since the financial crisis, the debt ceiling, we, we come up and we play this game of chicken yep. uh, pretty much every year or so when the debt ceiling comes up. And last week, well, actually it was this week, Janet Yellen would like to get rid of it, Jason. In other <laughs> words, let's not even talk about it. Well, let's just raise it to infinity. And that way... Uh, we will never have to worry about because if, if Congress doesn't agree to raise the debt ceiling, the United States defaults, right? Because the Treasury won't have enough money to pay its bills. And of course, uh, you know, they, I laugh because they, they talk about triple A rated or double A rated, right? The U.S. government's debt, the only thing that we have is a printing press. Right? Our, our ability to actually pay the debt, we don't have the ability. We, we can't pay $30 trillion. We can't pay it. Well, it, it now, could, Joey, Joey could be, it could be but done. But we can't be, keep printing the money, right, Jason? You, you could pay it off if you were creative and got rid of your central bank. But, yes, with a central bank, it can't be paid off. Right. <laughs> you're, you're, we're probably splitting the hairs about that. Right? Yes. Another reason to get rid of the central bank. But now they don't even want Jan the Treasury Secretary, and of course she was the head of the Federal Reserve. The, I, I have this terrible feeling. Uh, and I'm watching uh, all of this talk about, you know, the digital dollar. And I've already said, listen, it's already coming. We, we almost have it now, really, when you think about Think about how often you're using your, your debit cards and your credit cards. And, and granted... Uh, the digital currency, it'll process things faster. A digital currency would really allow for people, not, you know, the central bank could replace pretty much, you know, we got about 4,000 banks left. They could probably get rid of like 3,900 banks. Easily. With a digital currency. Easily. I think even more than that, Joe. Right, maybe it be, right could get rid of them all technically, or, or they they would have to reinvent themselves. They don't want a debt ceiling, and uh, and I'm getting this horrible feeling that instead of when the because we don't listen, the crash is coming. We, everybody knows. We know. We, we is it. Uh, early 2022, late 2022, we, we can argue, we can debate, but it's coming. I was hoping that after this next one, because this is going to be the worst one by far. And, and, and really, and, and you're like, well, why would you say this? How do we know it's going to be worse than the other? And the answer is because 
every crash we've had, go back all the way to 87. Every crash we've had gets bigger. And the reason they get bigger is because we cre- we created more debt, right? We blew up the, you know, we got to blow the bubble bigger. This one, the amount of debt we've created since the last, since 2008. You think that, that's not that long? I mean, we're talking about 13 years. In 13 years, we've created about $25 trillion of debt. Because you got to remember, we're at the debt ceiling now, so we already we know that the national debt now is somewhere in between 29 and $30 trillion. Because when the Treasury restocks its bank account back to the $500 plus billion dollars, will be somewhere between 29 and 30 trillion. We know the Federal Reserve, they've got, you know, nine, let's round up. Let's just say Federal Reserve, by the time they're done with their quote unquote tapering, their balance sheet's gonna be 10 trillion. So that's 40 trillion. We only had about 15 trillion 13 years ago. Not to mention money supply and all these other factors. So this next one is going to be significantly worse than the last one. And the last one really sucked. And now, instead of what I was hoping was, hey, we'd take power away from the banks, Jason. We'd take power away from them. But it sure looks like it's angling in the other direction. Yeah, I, I think the Democrats and the Republicans both want to keep spending money, Joe, uh, and keep this thing floating, kick the can down the, the, the road. I think the only reason it's not already done now <laughs> is because I think they argue over the timing. Why do I get the feeling they want to uh, inject enough money to the, uh, for the Republicans? Uh, let's get two weeks into October next year. And why do I feel like the Democrats are like, well, let's inject enough money to get two weeks into November? You know, so that they they're on the right side of the midterms next year. <laughs> that's, that's I think. Well, that's I mean, obviously, look, look at Janet Yellen saying, "Hey, I got an idea. How about you guys just vote to get rid of it? Yeah, then just we don't rid have to do it. this at all." Yeah, but, right? but see, of course, the reason that doesn't work is because one side always wants to angle the timing of it <laughs> against the other party. That's probably the only reason they haven't done it, Joe. <laughs> right? They want to get past the next elections and, and those. I, I, and and this was a really interesting year for debt. Because, so I just told you, yesterday the fiscal year ended. In the next couple of weeks, they're going to come out and tell us that the debt for fiscal year 2021 was a little over $3 trillion. Somewhere, let's just say $3.1 trillion. And they're actually going to say, see, oh, it was a little less than last year. And this is going to be the headline you see everywhere. But I want you to know that number actually isn't what happened. See, the Trump administration, when COVID came, they gave the Treasury $1.8 trillion. They put $1.8 trillion in their checkbook. Which was a big jump in the debt. Remember the debt? We were running like trillion dollar deficits, and now we're running three trillion, right? Yep. A big piece of that jump was putting more money in the Treasury's checkbook. Just in case, I remember they were playing that game with the Fed where they were loaning the Fed money, and the Fed was, was uh, you know, using margins to buy more. Blah, blah, I won't go into all the, just trust me on this. When Biden got in, see, they, they wanted to under-report to you all of the spending they were doing. So what they did is they started spending all of that extra money in the Treasury's account. So this $3.1 trillion or 3.2, whatever it's going to be, is actually going to be light 
about another $1.3 trillion. But hey, who's counting anyway? According to Janet Yellen, let's just forget all about the debt. Let's never talk about it again. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe Jaquin, Jason Walker. Uh, gold's up three, uh, seventeen sixty three. Uh, silver's up fifty cents, uh, twenty two fifty five right now. Twenty two fifty five on silver. Today I got another good item. I don't have a ton. I've got forty ten dollar liberties. And they're going to be at $1,015. $1,015 at 800-951-0592. Uh, the 10th ounce gold eagles, like I, I warned you yesterday, back to 255. And, and gold keeps moving here. That 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 number is getting ready to go up. Silver will we'll, we'll know, hopefully, some better news next week. But as of... As of now, the bullion banks have oversold. The U.S. Mint uh, is significantly behind. Uh, the, you're, they're not taking any orders on new Silver Eagle, none. So you can't. Or so everybody that has Silver Eagles, you have the supply you have. Uh, the backdated Silver Eagle market premiums have exploded. You know, now they're talking, you know, uh, at a wholesale level, eight, ten, twelve dollars over spot for comp. What I'll call, you know, like twenty seventeens and twenty eighteens and twenty fifteens. Uh, you 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 got uh, Silver Eagles backdated into the nineties that are that look like they're new and they're not all toned up. Uh, you, you we're seeing premiums. Uh, that are 15 and $20. Uh, so just be patient right now. We'll see what's happening. Uh, half dollars have disappeared as well. Uh, quarters and dime premiums are, are up. And again, we've seen this play out throughout this whole pandemic. And we're looking at, at prices, physical price markets that make the spot markets look like they have no clue of what reality really is, Jason. Yeah, and, and just because Joe says that uh, Silver Eagles aren't available, that doesn't mean the Mint just stopped minting them. You know, I always find it funny, Joe, that the uh, the U.S. Mint, when it comes to Silver Eagles, they don't like to report how many they minted till like a couple of years later, <laughs> as if they didn't, they couldn't count during the actual year they're, they're, they're minting them. And I think that has a lot to do with, uh, they don't really want to show how much silver was really being bought from the U.S. Mint uh, until a couple years ago. Well, they want to understate. That's right. right. They want to understate. Uh, and there's no doubt that uh, the U.S. Mint could – we know this. They minted in like 2016, 2017, they minted 50 million silver eagles in a year. So we know they're capable of, it, of doing at least 50 million. Yep. Why is the number 30 million? I have no idea. I can't, you know, and of course, oh, it's COVID, it's social distancing, it's this, it's that. Uh, hard, hard to believe. Uh, the more likely story is the amount of supply available for delivery through whether through the COMEX or through the London markets. Because it's it's and all the mints have the, it's not just our mint the Canadian mint the Australian mint the Chinese all, all the mints are producing well below what they're capable of producing, uh, which just says to me they don't want to run the price up because if they ordered what their needs would would be Jason I've got a feeling uh, the physical supply would be very strained. Right, and uh, when gold prices shot up in 2020, uh, that goes along with what you just said goes along with the, uh, well, the mining stock didn't really shoot up the same way like it did in 2011. So you're saying supply supply issues is a problem for the uh, the amount they're, they're minting. Well, I mean, 
what, you know those mint those those mining stocks usually go up when gold and silver goes up and they, and they went up but they didn't uh, they, they've been kind of sagging joe they didn't really go uh, where gold went in 2020 well, they've and got the same problems right, they, That's right. they've got covid problems at the mines they've got they've got to pay more for power they've got to pay more uh for for the maintenance on trucks and, and and shipping and they're not getting paid enough for their silver and gold they're mining yeah yeah i mean it, it's just simple math so uh anyway we'll keep you posted here uh we'll, hopefully next week things will get better i kind of doubt it but we'll keep our fingers crossed uh general motors was out today jason sales down 30 Three percent. Yep, it's, it's what happens when uh, you have to start paying your rent. <laughs> Sales down thirty-three <laughs> percent. I mean, you have to pay they, your rent. You can't go buy a car. Problem. I can't buy a car this month. We, we, now we have to pay the rent. Uh, uh, finally, oh man, <laughs> that's what happens. Here's the here's the crazy part about it. The average vehicle for General Motors. And really doesn't matter, you know, all you know, Toyota, Ford, they're all going to be about the same. The average price, new all-time record high, 47000 dollars for a car. For a car. That's up over $10,000 in the last 18 months. That's almost two and a half Archie Bunker houses. <laughs> he bought his house for twenty thousand. You, you go back. I, that's a great point. You know what? Go, <laughs> go back to nineteen seventy one. Forty seven thousand dollars. You could have bought two houses. Yep. Two. In New York. Yeah, and, 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 you know, and I'm not talking about the Skid Row house, right? That would have been a working middle class house. Yep. $23,000, $24,000 when it got you a middle-class house. Before we go to the break, we're coming up on the break. We've got two lines open, $10 liberties. Listen, put them away, $1,015. The latest, it's almost every day now, it's another item. This silicone, and I'm not talking about the stuff for pl plastic surgery. <laughs> silicone metal. It's uh, mostly produced in China. It's one of the second most abundant elements on Earth. So it's not a supply problem. Uh, in the last two months, the price of the metal is up 300%. And they're saying that silicone is pretty much in everything. This silicone metal... Uh, is in everything. Uh, one of the things they pointed out, uh, those computer chips that the car companies seemingly can't have, uh, have in there. It is uh, heating sand and coke in a furnace, if you wanted to know what it was. Uh, yeah, so the price of silicone now up 300%. Uh, don't worry. It's just transitory. We'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592 US $10 Liberties. These are the half ounce gold pieces. You know, the old gold. We like the old gold. Pre-1933. Back when our currency was backed by gold. Back when you never had inflation. Well, you can't say never. The only time we had inflation when our currency was backed by gold war and what? you know what happened right after the war ended right truly transitory transitory inflation. i was gonna say that joe transitory, truly <laughs> transitory right because the prices immediately went right back down to where they used to be before the war started yep that's right uh, yeah. truly <laughs> transitory inflation not this this you know new definition of transitory well eventually the prices will stop going up <laughs> yeah that's exactly right they're actually not they're not going to go back down but they're just going to stop going up it's kind of interesting ten dollars this gold piece that's on sale today it was ten dollars in 1866 all the way to 1907 and there was no inflation it bought the exact same 
thing. Half a cow. Ten bucks. Right, two tens. Bought you a, 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 a steer, a heifer. Now I'm telling you, I've got it on sale for $1,015. I'm telling you right now. This is going to be one of these moments in, in next year, the year after, the year after that, you're going to be, man, remember when they were $1,000? That's what we're going to be saying. Remember what a $10 piece was, $1,000? Man, I wish I'd bought more then. Yep. That's what you're going to say. They're $1,015, 800 951 Now, why did I bring up this silicon thing? A metal that I didn't even really know existed. Well, one of its main uses, solar, polysilicone, which is the uh, a solar grade, right? It's used in the solar cell, right? So the thing that makes it work. Jumped 13% on Wednesday. The supply, uh, because of falling supply, the price is up 400% since June of last year. And this is our great electric, I only bring up, because this is our energy plan. Right? Yep. This is our, our Biden energy plan here. I, I don't even, I can't even imagine what the cost of energy is going to be as we continue to stop building natural gas plants. You know, we don't build coal plants, coal plants here anymore. Uh, it, it is going to be astronomical. And with the prices you're seeing and what you're going to see this winter are going to actually uh, seem like low prices five and ten years from now. I wonder how much of that silicon metal is in a, their electric cars, too. Oh, it's, yeah. You, you know all of that energy, that green. If it's solar, it, the electric cars, all of those things are, are having a huge effect. Uh, and now, here's another one, Vietnam. Okay, so when China got too expensive, the and, and follow like sneakers, Nike, uh, clothing, a lot of that now is in Vietnam. Uh, it is now the second biggest supplier of apparel and footwear to the United States after China. So that's how big Vietnam has become. Well, apparently, uh, a new curveball emerging out of Vietnam. They are starting to shut down their plants, Jason. Yeah, and they're ultra shut down for COVID on top of that. So it's, uh... That's right, yeah. COVID have a big effect there. Uh, current factories in Vietnam manufacture 51% of the total Nike brand footwear in the world. To take all of, think about every Nike shoe ever uh, sold in a year. 51% of it comes from v Vietnam. Uh, Lululemon, Gap, Old Navy, just to mention a, uh, a few, uh, over 40% of their apparel all coming from Vietnam and now they're saying get ready apparently they're looking at 100% lockdowns in their factories this morning Jason yeah that, uh, that <clears throat> that's not going to bode well for uh, uh, cheap, cheap shoes in the stores this uh, Christmas season <laughs> you know it's uh, uh, the prices of everything going up Joe and uh, I mean, how, many, how many of these countries and how many of these shutdowns are we going to keep reporting uh, before the average person listening that's not buying gold <laughs> should be on the phones right now buying buying the uh, the gold. I mean, if you're if you have gold in as savings, I, I had a guy uh, Joe that was coming in asking me about gold. I think it was yesterday, day before, and asking me about all this cash he has. He's like, I've been holding on to this cash for decades. I was like, Do you realize what you could have bought? How much gold? How many ounces? Because we keep talking dollars. So we're all in this this dollar cult, this this Federal Reserve note cult. If we, if you simply understand how many ounces do you have, Joe, we gotta, we gotta start looking at how many ounces do you have. That's, that's what it matters. You know, you buy for ten, fifteen for a half ounce today. That's a, that's a great way to get started if you haven't, and it's a great way to add on if you've already bought some, Joe. Yeah, and, and you bring up the holding dollars. 
we already know, listen, for the last 13 years, the Fed has had interest rates pretty much at zero, which means holding do dollars is a fool's game, even with their fake inflation. Well, inflation was only 1.6%. Well, you're paying zero, so I'm losing 1.6%. Now, fast forward to today. Hey, you're paying zero, and we're losing 5, 6, 8, 10%. It's a hefty price to pay to hold cash. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment for the week coming up. 800-951-0592. Uh, gold's at the highs of the day, now up 7, 1765. Uh, silver's up uh, 53 cents here, 2255. Uh, the Dow is up today, rebounding from yesterday, up about 200 points. So this is about the highest. Dow's at the highest level of the day as well. The 10-year note, you know, falling below one and a half again, Jason, 148, because they know. They know. They can never raise rates again. Because if they do, this whole thing comes crumbling down. This whole house of cards comes crumbling down. We're going to have to raise rates at some point, I mean, or, or, or do well, something right, that or, seems like normal right. at some point. <laughs> inflation, it, well, uh, put it this way. Inflation's got to, in, in, in terms of the Fed, inflation's got to get a lot worse before they do something. It just, the, the, the printing press keeps running. It's already a lot gonna, worse, Joe. It's a lot worse. Here's the thing. The TV just telling people it's not a lot worse. That's you know, yeah, it, and, Well, it's a lot worse. And, and a lot of this, listen, when we're talking about problems in China and Vietnam and Europe, that's six weeks before that problem gets to our shore. So just know that, that you're, getting, you're getting advanced warnings about what's coming. And all of these retailers, as Jason was telling you, they've been buying as much as they can. And remember, China just reversed course yesterday. Said, oh, but we can't do it. We're going to be out of power. we got to buy everything. Buy all the natural gas. Buy all the oil. Buy all this stuff. And, and, and just going to keep driving these prices higher and higher and higher. And, and I saw an article yesterday. They're saying the average truck driver is now at 70000 a year. Listen, you want to solve the truck driver shortage? I know. Got to pay them a hundred grand. Yep. Well, because you know what, a house is five hundred grand, six hundred grand, seven hundred. Right? That people need to live. Walmart pays their truck drivers well over that, Joe. Well over. Well over seventy grand. There you go. <laughs> right. Well over. That ought to tell you all you need to know. Ten dollar liberties, thousand fifteen, eight hundred, nine five one zero five nine two. The the biggest problem in trucking outside of not enough truckers. Not enough parts to fix the trucks. Yep. Can you imagine watching a NASCAR race and the, they've ran out of parts for the for the pit stop. <laughs> <laughs> they go into the pits. Hey, we don't got any tires. You're gonna have to <laughs> ride around on the rib. Yeah, man, actually, you know what? More people may watch. I don't. They go. They, they go steal the other guy's tires. They just took off the other car. You know. To <laughs> Get a couple laps out of these. We'll get somebody else's. I don't tires. have any brakes left. Oh, we don't have any brake pads. Just keep going. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, that'd make the fans happy with more crashes. Hey, that's why I watch. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> we're going to have that more. And we're predicting more crashes because of inflation. <laughs> there you go, right? And I'll give you guys another one of my little secrets. Why I, I like to watch NASCAR and golf. Takes a long time. And you get to sneak a power nap in there as well. There you go. There's my tip of the day. Picture Radio News Hour. God bless everybody. 